What is up, YouTube? It's your boy, DWOG71. Replace day with a four, and I am here with my WWE Hell in a Cell review for the year of 2017. And, man, we got a lot to talk about tonight for this pay-per-view, so get comfortable, you know, get whatever you need for however long this video is going to be because I have a lot to talk about, especially when it comes to the main event after what just transpired. So, anyways, let's get right into it. So, first, we have the kickoff match. We had Shelton Benjamin and chad gable aka american alpha jr versus the hype bros in a pre-show match and honestly the match wasn't even that bad compared to how much how terrible pre-show matches could be on like regular pay-per-views that doesn't uh, count for like you know big pay-per-views because we can't get gems like usos versus the new day at the SummerSlam pre-show or like austin aries and neville at the wrestlemania pre-show stuff like that but um yeah, the match was pretty standard. Uh, it was it was good. There was moments. It was nice moments in there. Uh, it was parts where I, I would think they would win. And then, you know, a lot of false finishes. There you go. Um, there was a... Towards the end, they were the Hype Bros was about to go for their finisher, the Hype Rider. And then Shelton Benjamin uh, was able to get Mojo Riley off of him before Zack Ryder could do it. And Zack Ryder looked at him like, what are you doing, fam? And then... Uh, <coughs> Uh, Shelton Benjamin hits his like variation of like the face bust I guess I don't know exactly what it's called uh, It's like uh, I don't know exactly what to call it But he does it Zack Ryder somehow kicks out and they go for their uh, new power their new finisher Which is a power bomb into like Chad Gable's just jumping on top of whoever Shelton Benjamin's holding And they win the match. Uh, it was alright I mean it's a pretty show match I mean it was cool uh, But let's move on into the opening match which is arguably well, not really arguably. The best match of the night. And it was the first match. We had the New Day taking on the Usos in a Hell in a Cell match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships. And this match from start to finish was amazing. This is probably one of the best Hell in a Cell matches I've seen of the PG era. If that makes any sense. Because, you know, a lot of the Hell in a Cell matches have really been dumbed down because, you know... It really, the, the match itself has really lost its mystique in a way, kind of, because you know every time in October, okay, Hell in a Cell is coming, okay, we have to get this match out because the, that's the name of the pay-per-view. It, it starts to lose its mystique, so when it actually happens, the matches don't really turn out too well, like, uh, for example, Mark Henry versus uh, Randy Orton for the World Heavyweight Championship. That match was not really good. Randy Orton versus Sheamus. That wasn't really good. Um, the first Cena and Randy Orton match at the 2009 Hell in a Cell wasn't really good. But this one, like last year's Hell in a Cell matches were actually, they were nice. They were decent. Like I said in the review before, they were cool. But this one was off the charts. It was nothing but just violence. Like th this match was violence i saw stuff in new day that i never thought i'd see like the savagery in new day because you know they they can perform the good matches and stuff with uh the usos they have the great chemistry but i've never seen like the savagery like especially with Big E towards the end of the match so in this match we had xavier woods come in and wrestle and Big E and kofi kingston was on the outside so the match started at the very beginning the uh usos and the new day kind of looked at each other then they, uh, you know, gave each other their space, went to the rings, got weapons, and just start beating the crap out of each other. And then they took out one Uso, and then Xavier Woods literally just started beating up, I'm going to assume, Jimmy or Jay, uh, with instruments. He beat him up with one trombone, then another trombone, then he beat him up with a cowbell, then he beat him up with a gong, and then they start hitting him with kindle sticks, right? And as soon as they was about to go for the midnight hour, I think the other Uso came in, threw a chair like he was Sabu at Xavier Woods. Xavier Woods is out of it. Then they start beating the crap out of Big E. They start whooping him with kendo sticks. They start super kicking, you know, all that good stuff. And it only got better from there. Then eventually Xavier Woods came back. Then they start hitting each other with more weapons, more kendo sticks. Oh, the kendo sticks was the real MVP of this match, honestly. It was one spot I loved that uh, Xavier Woods did. I'm, I'm going to assume it was either Jimmy or Jay. I'm going to continue to say that. I'm going to assume it was either Jimmy or Jay. And basically what he did was he put him in the corner of one of the cells, right? Put him in the corner of the cells. He took four kendo sticks and it had like a New Day kind of colored uh, kendo stick. And he basically locked one 
uh, locked them by putting each candlestick in between the cage door. So it's kind of like there's lock. And then he basically made him watch them beat up his brother with the candlestick until he escaped from it. Um, let's see what else happened. Oh, Xavier Woods. Ooh, Xavier Woods got the work with the candlesticks. Oh my God. So the new, so the Usos went into thug mode, right? And they start grabbing uh, handcuffs. Ooh, they grab handcuffs. First, they locked up Big E. They locked him on the apron or something like that. They had to keep him down so he doesn't do nothing. You always, you know, smart, any smart team or wrestler would know if I'm in the match with a big guy, we got to take the big guy out, the power out, because he's going to destroy us. So they did that, took Xavier Woods, and basically they were trying to do, they were trying to cuff him up. And Xavier Woods slapped, I'm going to say Jimmy or Jay. <laughs> slapped him in the face and it was like all right bet so then they put him on the handcuffs hung him on the uh the ring post like that his hands is up in there he can't move and they just start beating the crap out of him with the kindle stick shot by shot by shot by shot by shot by shot if you want a visual i guess of it just think of when randy orton was beating the crap out of john cena with the kindle sticks i, I think it was a uh, breaking point when they had their whole their big feud um, yeah, when you just beat the crap out of him with Kindle sticks, there was other spots like Biggie hit his, uh, you know, uh, ring apron spear to the cage, looked like he broke his neck. Then it was one spot where, uh, the Usos had, I'm going to assume it was Big E or Xavier Woods. They had him on the shoulder for an electric chair drop and the other one went for a suicide dive and just went into him because why not? But the one one of the best parts of the match, honestly, was Big E when he went full savage mode, right? So he just started powering up. After he like um you saw what they did to him, he got so angry, he started suplexing people into people. He ended up uh throwing one of them out. He took the other Uso, threw him into the cage, then threw him into the other one, and then he just started just beating the crap out of them. Then he was going for the big ending. They super kicked them. They went for uh, the, the multiple super kicks they had did at SummerSlam. They went for the uh, double. Uh, what was it the uh, the double splash? But Xavier Woods broke out of it, right? And then they did the same thing to Xavier Woods. But they, I mean, before that, let me mention I knew they did hit their finisher, but there was a breakup by one of the Usos. So, <sighs> my bad. So after that. They beat the crap out of Xavier Woods again with the kendo stick. Put the steel chair on Xavier Woods' uh, chest, stomach area, and went for the double splash. One, two, three. The Usos are your new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And, man, this match was amazing. I have to give it up to the New Day and the Usos, who have been tearing it up on SmackDown since, like, what, June? And they've been keeping that tag team division alive Man, I, I got to give them the credit where it's due. I think the New Day and the Usos right now, other than Sheamus and Cesaro, are the best tag teams in WWE right now. They perform the best matches. They can cut great promos, and they can perform great matches every single time. Whenever you look at a New Day versus Uso match, each match is as good or better than the next. And that's just that that's amazing. That's the amazing thing about wrestling. It's always topping performances, having good performance, good matches, and stuff like that. So then after that, we got Randy Orton versus Rusev in a match that honestly I, it wasn't terrible. I just didn't like the the uh, ending of the match, but it eh, it was what you would expect out of a Randy Orton and Rusev match. Rusev basically tossing around Randy Orton because he's powerful and then Randy Orton doing what Randy Orton does. The match was cool. It was a nice wrestling match. It wasn't boring of nothing like that. It was just, it, it happened, you know what I'm saying? Then the ending, you know, it looked like Randy Orton, he was going for his, uh, you know, his little pose thing he does, his taunt he does right before he does the RKO where it looks like he's crawling on his fist. And the thing was Rusev decided to crawl under that and put almost put in the accolade only for Orton to get out of it, RKO Rusev, and win with the one, two, three. Honestly, I would have Rusev win because right now it it would work for Rusev. I know Rusev got that one random. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I apologize. I know Rusev got that one random uh, victory on SmackDown because of the distraction from Ada English, which I don't know why Ada English didn't um, pull up in this match, honestly. 
Uh, he hit him with RKO. Randy Orton won. I don't think that this feud is over with. I think there's going to be a break because, you know, the next pay-per-view for that's going to involve SmackDown will be SummerSlam. I mean, you know, that's like a co-branded pay-per-view. So that, that that's something that might happen. Uh, I would have had Rusev win, though, just because, like, it would it would have made more sense for Rusev to win. Randy Orton, I, I don't know. Like, it, I in my opinion, I think it would work better had Rusev win the match. That way he can go on and, you know, continue to brag about how he is great, you know, Rusev Day, all this kind of stuff, because that is over. It got Ada English over. People were chanting Ada English on the kickoff show. And then Rusev Day got a chant. Like, come on now. That that was clean. So the next match we end up getting after this was the United States Championship match. Early in the kickoff show, Ty Dillinger talked to Daniel Bryan and was able to get himself into the match, making this a triple threat match. And before we get into it, let, let me just talk about kind of the match itself. The beginning of the match was honestly boring, but it was a slow build to it. this match end up being pretty all right in my eyes. Um, yeah, it was just really boring. Nothing remarkable really happened. Every time AJ Styles would try to get involved in the match, Baron Corbin would just take AJ Styles out, and then he would just dominate Ty Dillinger the whole entire time. They didn't really start picking up till AJ Styles got in the match, and it started to become more of a triple threat match. Then I'm going to knock this guy out of the ring. Then I'll fight you 1v1, bro. It, when it actually started to become a triple threat match. So, you had spots like, uh, let me think. It was a spot where Baron Corbin had both of them in the corner. And what he would do is he would run into, um, he what he did was he ran into AJ Styles, ran into Ty Dillinger. Then tried to go into AJ Styles. AJ Styles moves out the way, runs into Ty Dillinger with a, a jumping clothesline. Uh, same thing to Baron Corbin. Then tries to do the Ty Dillinger. Ty Dillinger goes for a, a running chop on Baron Corbin. Then AJ Styles puts his foot up, uh, puts his foot up, and then AJ Styles goes for, I believe, I think he went for a Pele kick, and then Ty Dillinger hit a super kick. No, 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 no. Ty Dillinger hit a super kick, then AJ Styles hit a Pele kick, and then he went to the ground. Ty Dillinger magically fought on Baron Corbin for the pin. I, I would have been so surprised if he won with, with that. And then AJ Styles pushed Ty Dillinger out of the way. The match continued. Uh, let's see what else happened. Remarkable. Uh, let's see. AJ Styles went for the, uh, he went for the calf crusher and Baron Corbin got out of that. He pulled Ty Dillinger out. I'm trying to think of how the ending went because it was like Baron Corbin basically snuck a vic. Oh, AJ Styles went for the phenomenal form on, uh, Ty Dillinger and then Baron Corbin threw AJ Styles out of the ring and pinned, uh, Ty Dillinger to win the United States Championship. So you're brand new. WWE United States Champion is the Lone Wolf Baron Corbin. Honestly, uh, honestly, I'm gonna keep an open mind and see what happens with what with what's gonna happen with him being the United States Champion. Um, uh, my friend Zach brought up a point that they just I was mentioned that Baron Corbin is very cheap. He gets his victories cheap. He's a cheap guy. You know all this kind of stuff. Uh, he's not you know yeah an honest person. I guess you know he's very cheap. He would. Do whatever it takes to win. So this was kind of an example of that. He took advantage of AJ Styles incapacitating Ty Dillinger and then took him out, pinned him. Your new United States champion. Let's see what happens. I'll keep an open mind. All right. Before I forget what what happens next, let me look. Let me grab my phone real quick so I can look at the rest of the card because I don't want to have a uh, extreme rules moment where I forget a championship match like that. So the next match we end up having was the SmackDown. Women's Championship match with Charlotte Flair versus Natalia, and honestly, the match didn't really move me as much as I thought it would. Uh, you know, Natalia and Charlotte are good performers. If you want to see a good match between them, I know this is pretty cliche is now, but you're gonna have to watch an NXT Takeover. Literally, it's called NXT Takeover. They were the second to last match. They had an amazing match. There, uh, they had another good match on. This is a main roster thing, so this is not also a cliche, but it wasn't. A, a promoted WWE product. It was basically a, a live event. It was a, the the first Roblox, not the pay per view Roblox end of the line. It was like a network special that had Dean Ambrose and Triple H in the main event. You should look it up. That match was actually good too. But they also had a great match for the Divas Championship on there. It was pretty. It, it was nice. Uh, the match I I really couldn't get invested into it as much as I thought I would. The only time I got invested was in the end when basically Natalia attacked Charlotte Flair. And kept destroying her leg and her knee because apparently she hurt her knee in the match. And kind of the thing behind this match was like Charlotte is back 
because, you know, she's been gone for the past couple of weeks, you know, uh, making sure her father, Ric Flair, is okay because, you know, Ric Flair was on the verge of dying, I guess, apparently. You know, everybody everybody in wrestling knows what was going on with Ric Flair, but he's good, you know. So, shout out to the Nature Boy, Ric Flair. So, basically, that was her whole thing. She's back, and now she wants to uh, be back where she is at the top, and she says she's going to do it for her dad. Boom, Natalia comes out and says, I don't know. I don't know about that, fam. Um... But the match was it was mad, and I know they're gonna have another match because you know Charlotte Flair, she did a moonsault on the outside, landed on her injured leg, then Natalia grabbed a chair and just beat the crap out of her, it just continued to beat the crap out of her with a chair, and then uh, Charlotte's just sitting there crying and then well, you know agony and pain, and Natalia's holding up the championship, and I thought maybe we'll get a Carmella cash in or something that's what i thought was gonna happen you give charlotte her little happy moment they might still do this at clash of champions but you give charlotte her little happy moment where she wins the title for her dad you know because her dad was almost dying and she's doing this for her family even though technically last year she disowned her dad when she was the divas champion but you know i'm not the divas champion when she was the women's champion she disowned her dad and which is why he isn't on tv now but anyways we're just gonna let we're just gonna uh forget that that happened and I thought Carmella was going to cash in, but maybe they'll do that at Clash of Champions. You would have Charlotte have her little happy moment. She wins the title, does it for her dad. Then Carmella comes out, cashes in, boom. We have a new SmackDown Women's Champion. Let's see what happens after that. So then we got a Fashion Files uh, video. Basically, this is what we're supposed to get on SmackDown. But because time constraints, they moved it to the pay-per-view. And basically... The Ascension are no longer monsters. You cannot take them serious anymore. Basically, I mean, that's how they've been ever since they got to the main roster. But uh, the the segment basically is Fandango and Breeze Breezango. Fandango and Tyler Breeze are just talking, and then the Ascension come out dressed in quote unquote their disguised. Uh, Rick Victor had on a blonde wig and connor had on a mustache i don't know why i call him rick victor i guess that that was his old name before they just called him victor but they were just there then they were had a tube and then it was a post of the ascension saying do you want to be our friends because the name of their case is called to be um so then after that they open up a case the case is glowing basically they're doing pulp fiction now that's the theme of the fashion files now it's going to be it's called um pulp fashion so yeah there you go and they also uh insulted the uh, ascension and then the ascension walked away in sadness because you know they were like once dominant monster tag team and now they're comedy acts also i want to talk about the posters in the background so they had one poster of cesaro after he had his teeth pushed up from no mercy and they said the two fairy three and then the other part <laughs> was they had a picture of raven the wrestler Raven, and the caption was "That's So Raven." That was hilarious. I give WWE their props on that. That was pretty funny. I'm not even gonna lie. So then after that, we got the WWE Championship match. We got Jinder Mahal, the WWE Champion, the Modern Day Maharaja, taking on the challenger Shinsuke Nakamura, the King of Strong Style, the artist known as the Rock Stars. WWE likes to call him. I he's the King of Strong Style. Let's let's keep it above fifty. So, the match was, uh, it happened. I honestly, I don't want to sound like these other people that complain, 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 bitch, complain, all this kind of stuff over gender being champion. Um, but I do have some gripes about gender being champion. Now, I was one of the number one people that, that were happy, that was, uh, uh, very excited for gender to be champion. But the reason was because it's something new. People... People only want new things to happen if it's for the people they like. People were happy when Kevin Owens won the WWE title because, quote-unquote, it's somebody new, but his reign wasn't good. But then when it's somebody like Roman Reigns gets something like that, then they boo it. Or when somebody like Jinder Mahal, somebody they don't like, and somebody who's been a jobber apparently his whole career, why I see the WWE champion all of a sudden. But my thing was like, please just give it time. You people love to rush stuff and just write stuff off as soon as it happens because it's not what you wanted to book and then I, I i just wanted to see something new happen so i was fine with him doing that and by the way they were treating the wwe championship anyways wasn't really good after aj styles you had cena who won it 
Then he became a transitional champion to Bray Wyatt, who became a transitional champion to Randy Orton. And then when Randy Orton was WWE champion, I almost forgot he was WWE champion. So while people are saying I care little about the title, the title was already demoted when they added a whole nother world title on Raw, the main show. So that title really lost its value back in the um, the, the announcement of the draft, honestly. So what y'all saying that the title has been demoted it's it kind of been demoted ever since the uh the was it the draft so the match happened the bollywood boys got involved but this time they changed it up this time they kicked them out of the match and surprisingly jinder mahal won clean with the coloss he won clean he tried to escape the ring and they fought in the crowd uh nakamura brought him back into the ring Nakamura got pushed into the turnbuckle, and then Jinder Mahal hit the Colossus one, two, three, clean. He retained the WWE Championship clean. And what I had predicted, I thought that maybe you know because Hideo Itami has not been on any NXT tapings recently. He has he's not gonna be on anything NXT that I know of so far. So I thought maybe they're secretly trying to move him up to the main roster, and maybe. One thing you could do is have him cost Jin, uh, have him cost gender, have him cost Shinsuke Nakamura the match or something, and then claim you know uh, that gender is, is a joke, you know the way he represents Japan and all this other kind of stuff, you know, and it could be a nice little match that they could have on like a SmackDown pay per view or something like that. So after that, well, let me say one thing. For all the grown men that sit up here and bitch, complain, moan over Jinder Mahal being WWE champion, it's never that serious. It, it really isn't that serious for you to be sitting up here crying like a like a like a five year old over something as simple as somebody being a, the champion. Like Jinder may have boring matches, but if we're gonna be honest, Brock Lesnar's matches aren't the best either. They are just starting to get good because he's starting to get people like Samoa Joe and Braun Strowman that actually make the matches interesting. But before that, when Brock Lesnar was WWE Champion, give me a match other than the triple threat match with Seth that was amazing. That was mind-boggling because his match with Cena was him destroying Cena. The rematch was almost the same thing, but Seth Rollins got involved. Then they had a triple threat match at uh, Royal Rumble, which was a good match. The match at uh, WrestleMania was him literally suplexing Roman until Seth Rollins came in and uh, cashed in, and then his title reign was over with. As the Universal Champion, he had a five-minute match with Goldberg, which, no, I don't even want to hear it when it comes to Jinder Mahal. Yeah, he might be lackluster in a lot of things, but if we're going to do this to Jinder, we're going to have to do this to uh, Brock. That's all I'm saying. Stop fucking bitching and complaining about shit. Like, you're fucking 30 years old. You know, you people are, like, 30 years old, bro. Like, come on now. Come on now. So, the next match... My, my bad. So, the next match we ended up getting was Bobby Roo versus Dolph Ziggler. And this match was not really impressive. Uh, the only good thing was Bobby Roo got his glorious pop. I didn't think... I thought the crowd would have been dead from the championship match. That they wouldn't even shout glorious. It'd be like... Not that many people that would say glorious, but they did, and they would pop whenever he did the glorious time. But the match itself was a uh, pretty boring. There's not really much to talk about. The Bobby Roode won with a roll up, and then Ziggler hit the zigzag after the match. Yeah, it happened. So now we get to talk about the main event. We get to talk about Shane McMahon versus Kevin Owens in a Hell in a Cell Falls Count Anywhere match. I don't think WWE has ever done anything like that. Um, to my knowledge, a False Count Anywhere match. Uh, Hell in a Cell, False Count Anywhere match, I should say. Yeah, so the match itself, uh, Shane McMahon was waiting in the ring for Kevin Owens, and he just couldn't wait no more. He got out of that, uh, out of the thing, start fighting Kevin Owens on the outside, and I thought, oh, they're going to dupe us. They're going to have spent probably 75% of the match on the outside fight, and then eventually they get back in. But then Kevin Owens escapes uh, Shane McMahon and his crunchy punches. Then he locks the door, and then, uh, what was it? Uh think Shane McMahon came back in then they start brawling they start fighting you know doing the standard stuff and at first I was like okay this is going to be a standard uh modern hell in a cell match they're going to fight there might be a few weapons involved and boom we get the match and I mean of course you're going to get a Shane McMahon spot I I was expecting that to happen and we did trust me we did get uh we got what we wanted what I wanted I should say so they continue to brawl for a minute it didn't start to really pick up until, because uh, at one point, it was literally just Kevin Owens dominating Shane McMahon, and then Shane McMahon eventually came back. I believe he hit a shooting star press, 
missed and Kevin Owens hit a frog splash and then eventually they just started brawling with each other destroying each other then Kevin Owens set up a table he put uh shaming man on it got on the ring apron and was about to go for the cannonball but shaming man moved out the way and one thing that i never really noticed uh that they do uh i've never seen anybody do this shaming man picked up one piece of the table scrap that kevin owens went through and just started beating the crap out of kevin owens with the table scrap i was just like what what is going on and then he brought him back into the ring got the trash can Put the trash can on Kevin Owens' face. You know, the whole Shane McMahon uh, coast-to-coast spot with the trash can. Boom, Kevin Owens is dead. Then um, he, Shane McMahon goes to the outside of the ring, goes to the uh, cage door and tells the refs. It's like, hey, open up the door, open up the door. They're like, Shane, we can't do that. He's like, all right, bet, whatever. So then he went to go grab bolt cutters, cuts open the thing, opens the door. Him and Kevin Owens fights. Kevin Owens kicks Shane McMahon in the balls. And then DDTs him and then picks him up and drives his <laughs> drives his legs all the way open into the cage door so that the cage door actually hits his nuts. It was, it was whatever, you know. Whatever happens, happens. So then they go all the way around to the announcer table area. They're fighting Kevin Owens' uh, um, headbutts Shane McMahon. Yes, Kevin Owens is wild with headbutts. Headbutt Shane McMahon, and then he climbs up the barricade. He was going to probably do a frog splash off of the barricade through the table, but he was like, nah. Climbs up the sill, and then he kept teasing that he was going to jump off and do a frog splash. I know Kevin Owens wasn't going to do that. So then he was like, ah, ah. He it, Every time he would do it, he would just stand there, and then the crowd would go crazy, and then I guess he was trying to get the crowd pumped up, and then he was trying to walk back, and you know how people walk back and they do what they said they weren't going to do. Then he stopped himself. Kevin... Then Shaming Man got up, climbed the cell. Then they start to brawl on top. Man, the commentary did amazing when it came to how worried they were every time they would hit a move on top of the cell. They would do a suplex on the cell. I think Kevin Owens did a pop-up powerbomb on the cell. They did a body slam, possibly. It was a lot of slams on there. And every time they did it, I thought, oh, God, mankind, they're going to fall through their cage and somebody's going to get messed up for real. And every time something would happen, whether it be a punch, a slam, or anything, the commentary was like, no, please stop. Please stop. For the love of God, please stop. And then eventually, uh, Kevin Owens uh, pushed Shane McMahon back, you know, with punches and stuff, climbed down, and then him and Shane are fighting on the side of the cage, kind of similar to Dean Ambrose and Seth Rollins from that one cell match. That was actually kind of decent. So, eventually... It got to a point where Shane McMahon knocked Kevin Owens off of the cage and Kevin Owens went through the table and Kevin Owens was dead. So then they brought the uh, EMTs and all that kind of stuff. And I was like, oh, no, Kevin Owens is about to lose. Oh, man, they about to bury him. So then Shane picks up Kevin Owens. He clears the table in the middle, picks up Kevin Owens, puts him on the table. Shane McMahon climbs it and they're trying to tell him, Shane, don't do it. You got a family. He was like, Kevin Owens has a family. Y'all don't want to do this. So then Shane Man climbs up all the way to the top of the cell, does his little spot, you know, the the, uh, the little cross thing, you know, name of Father, Son, Holy Spirit thing. He does it, jumps off. Kevin Owens gets off, or that's what I thought had happened until I saw Sami Zayn goes through the table. Luckily, there was an airbag under the table because you could see uh, Shane McMahon bounce off of the table after he went through it because if not, I'm pretty sure he would be dead. So... Apparently, what had happened was Sami Zayn pulled Kevin Owens away off of the table and Shane McMahon went through the table. And in the back of my mind, I was thinking that might actually happen because I was just watching the match and I was like, hmm, wouldn't it be crazy if Shane McMahon gets screwed over by Sami Zayn? And that's what happened. So now after that, they got the EMTs and everything. Everybody's in shock out of what happened because Sami Zayn even looks like he's in shock. So then he moves. He tells everybody to move. Puts Kevin Owens on top of Shane McMahon. The referees count one, two, three. Uh, Kevin Owens beats Shane McMahon and the Fox count anywhere held a cell match. So then after that, we're just the uh, commentators are just reflecting on what just happened. Sami Zayn looks confused. Kevin Owens, you know, is walking back, and then they put uh, Shane on a stretcher. He puts the thumbs up. He's good, decent. The match was good. I enjoyed it. Now, let me give my thoughts on what I think, uh, why I think, not why I think, but just my uh, general thoughts on the whole Sami Zayn thing. If you've noticed on TV, 
the other person that has been kind of involved in the suit has been Sami Zayn, if you've noticed. It was that one week, I think it was two weeks ago, and Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn had a segment, and Kevin Owens would talk about how Sami Zayn is not as good as he thinks. Well, Sami Zayn is not good as him, you know, da-da-da. Um, he's saying how he's better than Sami Zayn. He's always been better than Sami Zayn. He was Universal Champion before him. Intercontinental Championship. He won the Intercontinental title before him twice. The United States Championship before him possibly three times. I can't remember. Uh, you know, all this stuff, basically. And then they had their match. The match was good. And then Kevin Owens destroyed Sami Zayn because that is what he's known to do. He's known to destroy it. He did it in NXT. He did it now. So it was that part. Then it was the part where he pushed Sami Zayn into Shane McMahon when he had the chair on him and all that kind of stuff. And the next week... When they were talking and Shane McMahon, Shane McMahon basically kind of waved off Sami Zayn because Sami Zayn was telling him, listen, Kevin Owens, the way he acts now, I don't know exactly what he said, but it was something along the line. He was saying basically the Kevin Owens you're dealing with is somebody I've dealt with and it's not good. And then he was basically talking to him and then uh, Shane McMahon was basically telling him, no, 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 no. He was basically saying, he said, I got you with all due respect. I understand what you're going through, but let me handle my, let me do me, let me handle myself. So then Sami Zayn was just, I, I guess that might be the part. Um, I guess that you just have to pay attention to some of the stuff like that because now it, it came back to my mind towards like the end of the match before it happened. I was like, oh wow, and I was genuinely shocked, even though I had it in the back of my mind that it might happen. I was still genuinely shocked, shocked because it's weird seeing Sami Zayn in a heel role, but now seeing him in a heel role, he's probably gonna get more TV time and more and more of a uh, on screen thing now with him and Kevin Owens. So I like to see what's gonna happen with that. Uh, yeah, so this uh, pay per view in itself was it was alright. Uh, you know, both cell matches, I suggest you watch, um, if you want to watch a non cell match, I guess I would suggest you to watch the, uh, Rusev and Randy Gordon match, it was, it was decent, it was good, it was cool, uh, yeah, so you guys know what to do, like, comment, favorite, subscribe, do your thing, make sure you follow me on all of my social media stuff down in the description below, what is it, Thursday, WWE 2K18 releases, and I'm going to be playing that joint all day, all night long, and I'm going to set up my universe mode thing I'm doing with a couple of the homies. I have NXT, so expect to see NXT stuff real soon on the channel from WW2K18. Also, Destiny 2 on PC drops. I'm trying to get gameplay for that when that drops. Star Wars Battlefront 2 drops soon. I wanted to record 2K videos, but I'm really not uh, uh, too fond of 2K this year. It's pretty mad to me this year, so I'm just waiting for other games that I know I will enjoy to come out. And record other stuff. I want to record me playing PUBG, but I, I don't do as good as I think I do. And me recording stuff on GTA is pretty redundant at this point because everybody played GTA. That game, it's not that it's played out. It's just played out on YouTube. You don't see a lot of people play GTA 5 on there. Uh, Friday 13th kind of stuff. I might play that on Friday 13th. Uh, pretty sure I'm not because I think I have a football game then. But whatever. I'm rambling at this point. But do everything I just said. Thank you for watching. I'm out of here. Peace.